One of the most common purposes that information sources are created for is entertainment. Some entertainment is purely made up, but other entertainment is twisting and embellishing on reality. An example is reality shows. You may learn a few tidbits by watching the show, but you can't rely on it not to exaggerate, oversimplify, leave things out, or mix fact with fiction. Another purpose is satire, which is ridicule directed at the foolishness or bad behavior of powerful individuals or groups. Basically, satire is comedy that criticizes. It may be based on reality, but the author is trying to make a point and be funny, so the facts may be distorted or mixed with fiction. When an information source is created to change your mind or alter your behavior, it may overemphasize things that help its argument and leave out things that weaken its argument. Persuasive information sources often manipulate the audience's emotions with loaded language, imagery, and anecdotes. This can be harmless if the techniques are mild, since most adults are aware of when they're being persuaded and can defend themselves. But you should still avoid using persuasive sources as research materials. Propaganda is persuasion taken to the extreme. Its purpose is to stop you from thinking critically so that you'll accept the message. It ignores or attacks alternate perspectives, and it uses all sorts of tricks to evoke strong emotions, either positive or negative. It's hard to even fact-check propaganda, because they use so much doublespeak. Advertising uses many of the same techniques as propaganda, but it's used to get people to buy things. An information source that's trying to sell you something should not be used for academic research. If you're researching a product or a service for yourself, you should fact-check all the information in other sources that don't have a vested interest in getting you to give them your money. Sources that are intended strictly to inform and or educate are what you need for research. These include scholarly journals and books, serious popular nonfiction books and magazines, and news sources, minus the editorials. Good textbooks and reference books also fall into this category. But sometimes you'll find that what's supposed to be an educational resource is actually subtle propaganda. Popular nonfiction books also often mix persuasive goals in with the information, so you need to stay alert to the possibility that you're being manipulated by what you're reading, watching, or listening to. The informational value of news from the major newspapers and TV news stations is also a controversial topic because they're funded by advertisers, and as it turns out, sometimes they also take money from governments and political parties. Many information sources actually have more than one purpose. You'll often come across information sources that are meant to give you information and to sell you something. The common example is infomercials. It's right there in the name. Information plus commercial equals infomercial. This article from Real Simple Magazine gives advice on using color and decorating, but it also guides you right to certain brands of paint and tells you where to buy them. Combining information and entertainment is also popular. News channels and websites often mix celebrity gossip and human interest stories in with the real news to the point that it can be hard to tell the difference. Some of the more serious reality shows count as infotainment because they do give the viewer some education on the topic, while also appealing to their morbid curiosity and desire for drama. Many documentaries also count as infotainment. If you do find information mixed in with the commercial or entertainment, you need to verify it from a strictly informational source before you use it in your research. Then there are the sneaky information sources that pretend to be informative but are actually something else. For example, this fake documentary. And these examples of fake news. Here's an ad for a fake book that's actually just a bigger ad for the product. While these examples seem pretty obvious, keep in mind that each of them managed to trick many people, and most of the times you'll have problems are when the information source creators were more clever and subtle than this.